All right, pause, top, pause dude. for ambient noise. I've seen better podcasts do this. Episode 80, dude, we're in. What up? We're live, dude. We're right back at it, dude. What's going on? We just tried to record an episode, and it sucked. It actually was too good. It was too good. It was real time, Bill. No, Moore. it was just too much. It was just me and Matt hitting our talking points like, back and forth. No, nah, uh, Kanye would beat him in a debate. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that was actually funny. You got fired. I told him uh, my socialist roommates hated Jordan Peterson. And yeah, I could see that the, set me off. The that fire in his eyes. It sent me down like a so thirty. What do they f- fucking know about Jordan Peterson? Fucking. <laughs> They were socialists. I, I, you, you could have a single payer health care and still like him. It's fine. And then, uh, and then I fought about. I, I rambled about uh, female comics in the Philadelphia scene. Bad mouthed me Secretly. behind my back. Secretly. They tried to trash me. And uh, private eyes are watching yeah, you. Dude, you don't think I got my fucking my little fucking rats <laughs> scurrying about, dude? I got my fucking I, I got my feelers out there, dude. No. My spies. Dude, I didn't tell you what happened to me. Re- so I, I watched the Pizza and Gate I skull, dude. Fire up the fire skull. up the motherfucking skull, dude. I watched pinch. Pizza Gate. Um, I watched like that thing that was on our Reddit. Yeah. There's a part two to that. And it gets really anti-Semitic really quick. Uh-oh. I'm like sitting here like, all right. Because I, I heard there was like an MK Ultra theory. That's like a new thing on YouTube now. To like if someone starts acting weird, like have they been MK ultra You know what MK Ultra is? No, what? It, it was this like CIA experiment that's actually documented. i heard of it. Where they gave people like huge. so LSD, is that the one? Huge amounts of LSD because the, the, the CIA was looking for a truth serum because it was rumored that like Russia had a truth serum and they were both kind of bluffing each other. Like, well, we yeah. got a fucking truth serum too. So like, let's try LSD. <laughs> let's just give these fuckers acid. So what happened was you'd have, they have hookers. So like you'd have a hooker who would bring you into like a room that was set up already and they'd have like a two-way mirror or one-way mirror or whatever, you know, two-way mirror, whatever the fuck it is. So people yes. would watch you. The hooker would spike your drink with like, they didn't back then too. Like you know, acid's so active per tiny little drop. So they were just like, it, it was like your great grandfather be like, give him a little shot of that LSD, and they'd hit him with like an yeah, ounce of LSD, like ten thousand yeah. hits. So then they give you like ten thousand hits of acid, and the hooker would leave and just wouldn't come back, and you're locked in a room, and you would just start tripping your balls off, and the CIA would be like, yeah, I think we can use this stuff. <laughs> you kill people. I mean, people jumped out windows. People never came back. So now they're trying to say that like people are like MK. That the Pizza Gate theory was that like these child stars were molested and then dosed with tons of acid and MK Ultraed by the to Jews. Where, and they they should yeah, basically that's where the second one came in. and was like, well, guess who's doing it? And I was like, no, dude, let the Jews run. Brittany, I was watching it late at night, and I, Brittany's like, are you watching porn? I was like, no, no. She's like, what are you watching? I was like, uh, I don't know. Anti-Semitic uh, child rape. Anti-Semitic child rape documentaries. <laughs> And it was the whole thing of being like <laughs> anti-Semitic child rape documentaries. <laughs> yeah. Jesus was, Christ! Was like, and the whole thing was like, and then like, like they were basically saying like instances where Jewish people in Hollywood have abused kids. And it's like we're just saying these are the people who are doing it, blah blah. blah. And then they go through like, I'm, I'm like, all right, you know, I've heard this before. And then like you go, then they go through like Hitler. And do you ever see a documentary that just hit Hitler's like good points? No, didn't mention the genocide or anything. It's no. just like. Germany was poor. He was a great leader. He got the economy going. And I'm like, and? And they just never. Like, and what I, about that other thing? That's when I was like, dude, I can't fuck with this. is crazy. Is this? It's the Pizzagate part, too. It's just literally like. No, I'm talking about the Hitler one. It was in the Pizzagate thing. The Pizzagate? They, I don't even remember how it happened. They just jumped to Hitler and they were just like, he did a lot of good things. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus Christ. Was, that's when I was like, yo, this is now like. This is where they're like, the alt right is Nazis. Yeah, and it's all. I mean, it's these all dog whistling to get you to become a Nazi. I could see that in my head. I'm like, what a fucking ingenious funnel though to take unless, Pizzagate to take child molestation. Be like, you know who does this a lot? And you're unless, like, unless what? Matt, unless whoever made part two, uh huh, was a Jewish puppeteer. What do you think? Do you think the liberals could have created Pizzagate part two to be like, see, they just want you to be a Nazi. This is all fake. I don't know because what do you think of that. I mean, it's it's dude. I mean, it's possible. But I think it was the kids from that high school in Florida. They probably. <laughs> I think they made, what's that kid's name? Hag? Hog? I, I know you're talking about. I can't I think, think of that. that. My that thing is, I would enter, I would entertain that. But like, this guns. was. 
there's no way a, a liberal could have engineered this fucking thing. Like, this was so flawlessly anti-Semitic that I'm like, this is the real deal, yeah. Then you were like, how do I smoke crack? Well, apparently it's more involved than you thought. He Smoking crack? Well, the, get, uh, obtaining I think a, it's the most involved thing you can do. Obtaining a it, crack pipe, I'm saying. I think saying. it is the most involved Well, you hear about activity. people, you hear about people like snapping car antennas off and just, you know, firing up a, a rock. Never heard that. That, that's what people used to do back when they had like the pull up car antennas and yeah, snap yeah, yeah. it off. So there was this. I like. Damn, I miss those antennas. Well, you don't see those anymore. You, too bad. They're gone, dude. People are blazing too hard yeah. with them. But apparently, that's that's what the uh, gas stations used to spell, sell gla- uh, roses in a glass tube. So the idea was to take the rose out, fire up the crack pipe. But you have to get a Brillo pad first, tear it up into little pieces, and you have to torch the Brillo pad, and it burns off whatever's like the chemicals are on it. Because you, know, you don't want to be taking in too many chemicals when you're smoking crack. And then yeah. you stuff that in. So you really, you're kind of like melting the crack onto the Brillo pad, then heating up the res again. That's like smoking crack's kind of tough. But there was guys talking about smoking out of a light bulb. You can smoke crack out of a light bulb, metal pen, tire pressures. Dude, and it was it was like a community of like crack smokers. Like, no, nah, check out this way. This is kind of cool. So why can't you just get a pipe? I know they're like illegal. Like a bowl? They're illegal, right? Like a crack pipe? Yeah, obviously. Well, it's, it's, obviously anything it's can, illegal. But. Anything can kind of work for it, though. So it's like, that's why... Can you just go to a head shop and buy a bowl? That, and that was, people were like, I just use a chillum specifically, because chillums, like the one-hitters, are pretty much like a crack pipe. But you got to have that screen, because like a bowl has a hole, but you need like a Brillo pad or some sort of porous thing to absorb the residue. Because okay. if you fire up the rock directly, you're missing a lot of that good crack, apparently. You're missing the good crack. For when I'm, yeah, for when I'm, but the, the funniest part was, I'm reading, I'm trying to like... I was trying to portray like a realistic dude smoking crack, and I always, I read Arrowhead to figure out like what drugs do to people. Because, you know, I've never smoked crack, but I'm reading about this. I'm reading all these accounts of, like, people, you know, blah, blah, blah. There was a guy who went to Medellin. He was in Colombia, I think he's in. Yeah. So he's in Colombia. He, he meets up with this. He's a Swede. He meets up with an Aussie. So he's writing this account of him smoking Medellin. crack of, in broken English. So this guy oh, bought. Wait, a Swede goes to Colombia? Dude, he, Swede goes to Colombia, and then he meets up with an Aussie who buys, like, 10 grams of cocaine off this guy. An Aussie. And Auss- oh. Aussies love cocaine. Further proves my theory. If really? you travel with an Aussie, dude, they they'll they'll grab blow. It's all the fucking criminals from Europe. I know that. Of course they love fucking coke. Come on. And then it's so like a bunch of Irish. Yeah, that's where the Brits were sending the old exactly. Irish. But the rowdiest of the rowdy too. Yeah. The rowdiest rowdy pipers, dude, went down there. <laughs> the rowdiest. They went down there and killed all the kangaroos. So this guy's writing a firsthand account of the time he he was trying to defend crack use, being like it's a mystical drug. It's you have to be mentally strong to handle it. But what happened was he. I was hanging with an Aussie and then met a, like a, a, tr- a shaman in training who was just this hippie floating around this place in Colombia. And he told these guys, he was like, you guys have coke? He's like, I'm going to make you like an ancient like an ancient ritual that we do down here. Yeah. And he just made crack. He just put in baking soda, heated it, and like he put it in a little thing. And uh, this dude, the Swede, was like so into smoking. Like, it's funny listening to his account because he's like, they kept telling me to calm down, but like I was just on another level. They tell me to calm down several <laughs> yeah. times, but I, I smoke crack. Yeah. So he's doing it, and he's like, you know, it's not even addictive. Like I just because he's he's calling them sessions when he does it. It's smoking <laughs> I have a cookie. Crack. So he's fucking smoking crack with this guy. They're like talking about like life and like like when you get really stoned, and you have like awesome ideas, and he's like, but the trouble is they go away from me, so I must record myself. So it ends with this guy. He's like smoke crack a handful of times, but he's got it all under control. But his idea is he has to get a. This is how old it is. He has to get like a video recorder so he can like smoke crack again and then videotape all of his ideas because he's like, I can't remember any of them. Yeah. So it ends with him like, I can't wait to get this video recorder. I can't. It's like 2001. So I was trying to find out like what happened to this guy, but I couldn't oh. find him. But it was just such a funny thing to like, this guy was defending crack use. Being it's, it's actually, you don't know this, it's a sacred sacrament. And shamanism in so Australia. This crackhead shaman was like, "No, nah, dude, this is a fucking." And this guy thought he was doing like a sacrament, and now he's just a crackhead filming himself on like crack rants, being like, Ugh. "Holy shit!" It's probably where the Pizza Gate too came from, dude. You think it could be? There's that a guy somewhere sense. in Sweden smoking crack and recording all of his thoughts and being like, "Oh fuck yeah, dude!" It oh, was the yeah. Jews. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that made me laugh so fucking hard for that guy, just for someone being tricked and writing his thing as oh. if like, "No, nah, you guys have no idea what's going on here." Yeah, that's. I mean, an Australian tricking him into it is pretty great. Well, the Australian had the coke. It was just some random dude. Oh, it was just some a random, random guy wayward in Colombia. Some weird dude who was just like, "I'm a shaman in training, and this is what we do." Yeah. But you know, so the weird thing is, and this could just be me because I'm like I'm always listening to all this shit. But so there was Black Panther came out. I watched Infinity War. Infinity War seems to be dealing, and I could totally be making this up. But the bad guys, Thanos, 
And his whole thing is that he destroys 50% of the population only because, like, he's, like, in his home world or whatever, 50%, like, people were poor. And then when half of them died, you know, it it, it thrived. Or I think his home world ended up getting wrecked. But he he goes and conquers around the world and kills half the population. But then the population thrives. Yeah. So I think Marvel's trying to, like... So Thanos, counterbalance like Western civilization to where it's like, yeah, but look how many people died. And he's like, but look how sick this is. So, so Thanos is like Planned Parenthood. He's trying to control the population. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's Thanos's idea. He's like, if, literally. He's trying to kill Black Panther for, he's trying to abort Black Panther. I mean, Thanos. Thanos is I'm not, I don't want to give any spoilers. Thanos rolled through Wakanda, bro. He aborted Thanos Wakanda. hit fucking Wakanda hard. <laughs> I'm not gonna give away the thing, but he's he's fucking shit up nonstop, dude. God, it'd be funny if Thanos has had like an Alex Jones head on the whole time. It's like, <laughs> Lower your shields. But the um, yeah, yeah, that was funny. So the Infinity War is dealing with that of like I think they're kind of like dealing with like the Western civilization brings so many things, but like at so what, you saw it, but Infinity at Wars? what cost? I saw it this weekend. Yeah, my girlfriend loves Marvel, dude. You love it too. I'll say Infinity Wars was pretty good. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna see it. It's um, it, they left out a lot of the cheesy humor, oh, but good. Sick, love dude. nuclear technology. I dude. can't wait for nukes to start Fuck, man. popping off, dude. Oh, dude, I fucking I'll can't be safe wait. Safe down here in this basement. I do fantasize sometimes about like a post-apocalyptic world, or just like having to live like if the whole government falters, everything goes down to shit. Sometimes I think like. As much as people are like, oh, you say that now. And it's like, I know. I would miss fucking hot water and shit, but fuck, dude. Just roaming around. No one has jobs. The I only just, game is just fucking getting back to your bunker, blasting fucking thieves and pirates. Dude, I mean, I understand you're talking Mad Max, but yeah. when governments falter, you get the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. You get you Some and your do. family are put in a camp. Some do, but by who? And you're working. I'm not talking, but that's like another just government a gang of popping dudes up. With AK-47s. I'm talking about just it's pure anarchy. I know. That's why I said I know you're thinking like yeah. Mad Max level. Exactly. But fire up a go kart, dude. Blast it across the grass. You're like, what the fuck is that? Hell yeah. I think about that. Dude, or just like rough. riding a horse. Like does you just ride a horse? Get a horse. Get some water. Your day is like make it to the water hole. Get pl- a wa- get some shoot water. a bandit. You got to water your horse. Yeah, I got water, shoot dude. A <laughs> this is good stuff. I f- I'm not gonna lie. Would I you keep? About that. Would you keep Ajax with you? He'd be on my fucking compound. I mean, I would, team. I would call. I have a big family. I would call. I'd be like calling all cousins, dude. We're gonna set up a barbed wire fucking Damn, fence. Damn, you know how hot that would be with all those hot cousins around in your barbed wire fence. I mean, I mean that economy. Hot cousins are like having. That's like your savings account. You'd start getting some trades well, on with me, other compounds. The Gillis clan in Central PA. We could barter <laughs> some cousins. We'd be on the Silk Road, dude. We'd be on the pubic hair road. <laughs> <laughs> Come up to the Appalachians, dude. We'll give you some cousins. Be the cousin pube road. We'll trade you some cousins. <laughs> That'd be sick if we could barter cousins. That'd be tight. I'd give you a fucking ugly fat Gillis. You'd give me. A, <laughs> I'd barter some cousins for you. I get the boys. The boys would get on her. I got Frankie Gillis, dude. Him versus Ajax might be the battle of the century. Oh, that'd be a sick we entertainment. Fight like champions. Everyone would start shaking hands at the elbows yeah. too. Be like, nice. Glad yes. we joined camps. Be like, now send your autistic cousin versus my autistic cousin. <laughs> Frankie would fuck shit up, dude. I gotta show you this guy. I gotta, I gotta see these boys in action. Frankie's dude. one of the funniest people ever. I mean, I'd have all the boys out in the yard all day, just like lifting rocks and shit, dude. Just preparing for. No, my family, my family now is weak. We'd have to join forces with. There's the Connolly brothers. We would join the Connolly <laughs> clan. Would unite. We'd have Central PA. We'd have a good post apocalypse. That'd be a nice plan. stronghold. Yeah, that'd be a nice stronghold. We might post up at Three Mile Island. That's a See, good post-apocalyptic chill that's a, session. That's the post-apocalyptic the fucking, chill uh, session. What are those dude? towers called? The water towers? The the fucking Homer Simpson tanks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever they're called. Just, we'd set up shop right there. Damn, dude. Fuck our cousins. Mutate. We'd all start mutating. <sighs> yeah, you don't wow. get... I think after like... No, yeah, you can't fuck your cousins at all. I was like, maybe you get like one generation. <laughs> that's all you right. Can't fuck, you can fuck your cousins. You can get away with it, but you got the there's a, you got to hide a lot of freaks. Very, uh, you got to hide. Yeah, they, you got to hide a lot of freaks. What the Muslims say? It's very uh, very negligible. It is negligible. Uh, the, the risk of uh, uh, cousin marriage is very negligible. One percent. <laughs> it's like, dude, yeah, that's a lot exactly. of fucking millions. How many Muslims are there? Twelve hundred. Hold on, how many Muslims? I think there's like two billion. Yeah, you're close. Yeah, two to three, maybe. Uh, three is pushing. They're it. growing too. I think it's like one point eight. Okay, but the Muslim, I think I was thinking that their their population is growing faster than any other they religious subset. They're down in Indonesia. They're going, baby. Popping them out. They're going quick. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I thought they're not allowed to. It's Saudi Arabia. Oh, uh, okay. But it's still that's a very Muslim. Yeah. No, that's that's good. Good. I'm telling you, the Muslims got a couple things right. 
not letting girls not letting, not letting women drive is my favorite Muslim tenement. Well, it's funny how it's driving driving existed after the Quran was invented. Yeah. So then the, the cars came. They're like, oh, no good for you. Get yeah, out of here. That's one of the pillars. Very negligible. It's one of the tenements. <laughs> it's just it's no one, of the, one of the what is it? How many pillars of Islam is there? Five? I don't, I don't know. fucking know. It's like charity. I think it's two, dude. It's just fuck bitches get money. It's like you need to pilgrimage to Mecca. Women cannot drive. Dude, that's such a funny rule. You're allowed to fuck your cousins. That was like the uh, their Vatican too. Cars came out and they're like, what should we do about this? And like, of course they cannot drive. I'm, I'm down with that. I fucks with that. <laughs> yeah. That's like Thanos' mentality though. It's like if half the population can't drive, the roads are pretty, pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty Thanovian, dude. Like, if your bitch is going somewhere, just hop, put her in the whip, dude. You gotta take, take her somewhere. It. Drop sure. her off. You gotta keep an eye on her too. Well, dude, if you read Ian, if you write, if you read Ian Hershey at least thing, it's like they you don't really let them outside. They can go to the market, but only if like the eldest son. Someone's with them. with them. Yeah, you, you kind of they write up a grocery list, and you're like, all right, I'll be back. You yeah. don't really let we your need baby. The three goats heads. <laughs> you don't. You don't really <laughs> let them out of the house. Yes, yeah, I, I appreciate the way they treat their bitch. It's, I mean, it's like, dude, wear this fucking sheet and sit inside. Well, that's a, that's a. That thing's moving because there's people who are like getting away from that, but then you get like white yeah, feminist chicks who are that. like, I actually feel kind of powerful when I wear this, and it's like, well, there's I chicks, love my hijab. there's chicks burning them, so maybe you yeah. got, maybe you should chill with your hijab yeah, support. True. Just let's see how it shakes Why out. Don't you see the real powerful feminists <laughs> in Iran who are taking their hijabs off and burning them. Yeah, with the threat of stoning with, to death. Yeah, with getting hit in the face Jesus, with a fucking dude. rock. Yeah, god damn. It. Also, I found this out: uh, stoning deaths. A lot of times, they just stack rocks on you. What? It's not like you stand there and get hit with rocks. Well, you're in the debt. You got to save your energy, bro. They literally lay you down, put a board on you, and just pile rocks on you. They don't have like a. Uh, you, they smash you. They don't have like a like a their version of like the big unit like smashing a bird in midair. No, the no. <laughs> dude. They don't have like a Randy well, Johnson. You also got to think about that, dude. Imagine Muslims throwing things. <laughs> they're not good throwers. Muslims have two left hands. <laughs> yeah, they're not good throwers. They all throw like girls. <laughs> Because they don't have any girls in the population to like be like, okay, so that's wrong. <laughs> girls are all inside. Stop. That's how white guys get. That's how Americans get so good at throwing things. <laughs> we see women when we're growing up, and we're like, all right, so that's the wrong form. You don't step forward with your throwing hand. <laughs> you, don't, you don't throw from the other side of your face. <laughs> <laughs> that's what women do. They step with the same arm. So like, if you're left hand or right handed, you step with your right foot. Well, I don't you know this. Right women handed. instinctively throw underhand like softball pitches. Yeah, I bet they, do. <laughs> they go, they wind it up and they throw <laughs> underhand. <laughs> that's how they serve sandwiches when you're walking out the door to work. They fucking underhand you a sandwich and they're like, "Please bring us money." <laughs> Yeah, I'll be let me let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm gonna go down there and catch you morons. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, got caught drinking. I think I talked about it. I sophomore year, my dad caught me drinking. Did he? Yeah, it was fresh. It was freshman year, and I got I showed up to this this girl's party at her house, just hammered. Damn. I remember I was wearing a Mike Vick jersey, an Atlanta Falcons Mike Vick jersey. <laughs> and I spilled a bunch of like jungle juice on the front of it. So it was like all, I just had stains all over First this of all, white that's jersey. That's the funniest outfit to get caught drinking in. I know, Mike Vick white jersey. <laughs> but uh, Jungle juice spilled on And the it. parents, oh, that's what happened. I called my parents and I was like, can I sleep over at Dusty's? And they're like, yeah, Sick. that's fine. Five minutes later, I called back. I was like, can I sleep over at Dusty's? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, are you all right? I was like, yeah. And then I called back. Time. I called back one more time. I called three times. <laughs> and I was well, like, they even gave me yeah, the know, second. Like, yeah, 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 whatever. I called back the third time. They're like, your dad's on his way. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. That's fucking hilarious. So then I walked out of this party, and uh, my dad was like, I'm going to give you one chance. Did Are you drunk right now? And I was like, no. And he fucking backhanded me right in the face. <laughs> Like, ah, you, crying. you have a red stain on your face. <laughs> yeah. I was sobbing. And my dad just—he must have been like, "Dude, my son is so gay." Oh yeah, we definitely talked about we this. We did, but this then I, <laughs> now remember. Like I would go upstairs because my mom was in her room, and I'd be like, "The other guys made me do it. <laughs> they made me drink." And then I'd go downstairs, and I remember I took my shirt off, and I was like, "Dad, you fucking pussy! <laughs> <laughs> do you fucking hit me?" <laughs> I went down and tried to fight him. <laughs> <laughs> he got pissed too. I remember that. That's the first like thing he, he actually was like, "Yeah, what the fuck are you gonna do?" And I was like, "Nothing." 
thing. And I ran up the stairs. I was like, I fucking hate you. The first, when you're an adolescent with alcohol, their first mission is to fuck your dad up. As <laughs> soon as my dad caught me drinking, out. my first thing was like, what's up, bro? What, what you are you going to do, dude? He, he did the eye stare down. My mom's like, just leave him alone. He's walked. He's like, I'll fucking beat your ass. Yeah, dude, like, that must kill you if you're a dad, dude. Your fucking, like, 13-year-old son? Like, what the fuck, dude? So, dude, I remember I got, like, second honors. And I was like, dude, I got a 3.4 GPA, dude. Get off my back. And he was just like, <laughs> think I give a fuck? Yeah. Oh, man. Taking the shirt off, trying to fight my Take dad. Your shirt, taking the shirt. And then the- my dad be like, what? <laughs> and me be like, no. <laughs> running away, crying. <laughs> your best part is how on your naked body you probably still had the red, red stain stains. on your fucking chest. It went through the mesh holes of the oh. jerseys. So you had like a dotted red chest. Oh, like, God. what do you want to do, Dad? Oh, fuck, Dad. She fucking hit me in the car. You cheap shot me. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> ah. sucker punch me, you pussy. <laughs> <laughs> my dad would fuck me up, dude. Oh my god, it's so funny. Uh, I do remember my mom was in her room and she was laughing about it. Was she? She was like, she told me later that she was like, it was so funny how fucking pussy you were. <laughs> and I was like, the Hershey's made me do it. Man. <laughs> you told I, me I, I, I like blamed these kids that like my parents. I knew <laughs> my parents Hershey's. already thought were bad. <laughs> the Hershey's they made me drink. They said I was a pussy if I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went downstairs. I was like, Dad, you fucking bitch. <laughs> Dude, I got caught one night uh, where, like, I sat in the back of this. This kid was, like, a weed dealer in high school. And he just kept giving me weed. I was, like, fucking 17. So I just yeah. kept sitting in the back of this guy's car. And he had a corn cob pipe. And I was fucking... <laughs> you, corn cob pipes fit, like, a gram of weed in them. <laughs> so he was like, yeah, man, pack it up. And I'm just, like, sucking down weed in the back of this guy. It was an Oldsmobile... Some Oldsmobile car. I forget what it was. I'm just sucking down Corb Cobb. I smoked like an eighth of this kid's weed in my face. <laughs> and I'm drinking. Or I had like one drink and I smoked like a mind, like a baffling amount of weed. And to the point where I was like in a, I was at a field hockey game with my cousin. And I'm like tripping at this point, thinking I'm seeing people. Like I thought I yeah, saw yeah. my, I, I might have seen my friend's dad, but like I wasn't sure if I saw him or not. Finally, like, it's late as fuck. It's like 1130. I go home on a school night. My cousin's like, dude, just eat peanut butter M&Ms. It'll kill your breath. You're fine. I was like sick. And I wasn't even... I wasn't even drunk. I, w- I had one beer, yeah. and I was so fucking high. And I came home. My parents yell at me. I'm like, "Sorry, mom. Sorry." Because I, I didn't have a cell phone back then. I'm like, yeah. I, "I was just out. I didn't know what time it was." And I'm like, "My dad's just in a chair, just staring at me." And I'm like, looking at him. Oh fuck! And he's like, "Eat your dinner and go to bed." And I'm like, "All right." So I go into the cabinet, and like, there's regular bowls, and then there's like family serving bowls, and I'm just like. And I reached up and grabbed one of like the family sized bowls, not realizing how big it was. And I just filled that fucker with spaghetti. And mom's eating it. And my dad's watching me. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm eating this thing. I'm like, God damn, I'm so full. And I'm like, but I have so much left. <laughs> so I ate like a family's portion of spaghetti in front of my dad who watched me from an armchair while I was high and was just like, and he's like, what were you, were you drinking? I was like, no. And he's like, if I catch you smoking pot, you're grounded for a year. And I was like, oh, my God. That's so <laughs> long. That's so fucking long. So I finally finished the spaghetti. My dad kept being like, what's wrong with you? I was like, nothing, oh, Dad. I'm tired. And my mom had trouble with the computer. She's like, hey, I can't. She's trying to like send like an email. And I'm like, oh, all you got to do is copy. And I went, Ugh, and burped. And she smelled alcohol. She's like, were you drinking? And I was like, yes. Yes, oh. if right away dime myself out because I was like, um, I'd rather do a month because I used to get, yeah. I could call it drinking like five times and it was always a month punishment. And I got caught, I already did like three bids for drinking. I, I did you a time. That time. I could have done that shit on my fucking hands. That's dude. It was no big deal. So, like, you just found an old head. I guess, just... <laughs> yeah, I could have served that on my head, dude. And then my dad's like, You was what? And I was just like, All right. Were you drinking? I was like, I, I had two drinks. And then literally, like, you had more. I was like, Nope, I had two, I swear. And they were like, All right, well, you're grounded. I was like, Totally understand. Before I'd be like, Boogie! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grounding doesn't work. I studied it in psychology class. <laughs> <laughs>